Welcome back to the channel. I'm Peter Mokri, a Dallas-based DP, photographer, gaffer with a one-ton grip van full of aperture lighting. On episode two of my DIY camera and grip van build, we dive into the shelving built out of super strut. Today is day I don't even know. I've lost count. We're slowly but surely getting this build done. Here's the material that I put back in the van every night. And here's the progress we have so far on the shelving. Uh, I did remove one of the uh, horizontal shelves like this one. It was down here. It will be reattached, but I removed it because I did not the way, like the way it looked. I think it was cut just slightly short somehow. So we'll get that fixed up. But I wanted to show off a few of the features here. So here's the bottom braces and the other cross brace here. They're attached with a 90 degree and bolted on both ways, as you can see here. And then down below, bolted on and bolted on. And then we have the horizontal supports here going across the whole van that were installed with the rib nuts. And the way that it looked beforehand was just blank like this side. What I did is we added the rib nuts and then we put the bolts in. Now, the thing is, is those existing holes that were made by Mercedes, like you see here holding these pieces on, they weren't all lined up perfectly with the holes here, so we had to cut out slots. Instead of drilling the holes and trying to make them perfect and fighting them aggressively, I decided to just slot them with the uh, reciprocating saw so they would line up. So some of them are slotted to line up as others are lined up perfectly. That's just what I ran into one of the situations. Now, the spacing between the top here and the bottom here is quite a bit of difference. And that's just the way these uh, vans are designed, the Sprinter. I know that the ProMaster is popular because it doesn't have that arch happening uh, from bottom to top. But up there we're flush. Down here, if you see, I used the washers that are part of the uh, steel strut or super strut, sorry. I was going to say steel tech, but that's what I use for my cards. The super strut and I spaced it out just perfectly and then bolted through to hold it in place. So it's a really strong um, spacing there and spacer overall compared to using just regular thin washers. And it has a nice look to it. It doesn't look bad and you see it going all the way down to the end. Something that I came across was once you get up high, there won't be supports that can reach the same height. So what I ended up doing is what you see here is I got a scrap piece of strut, brought it up to where it would hit, and I mounted it from the bottom here, but also used a two-piece uh, connector, which you see right here. It's connecting from uh, this top part to the bottom part, and you can see where the two bolts go through. I connected that and I have one washer here so you have even spacing. And I mounted through the strut, so the strut is being supported and it is very strong. I mean, it moves the whole van. If you grab onto this and shake it, the whole van starts to move and rock aggressively from it being mounted so well. And that's what we did over here as well. And that gives us enough extension for this shelf that's right here. We'll be able to put the opposite end to catch the shelf, which up top we should be doing speed rail for Dana Dolly and we'll be doing overhead frames up top. This level here should be for rags. And then we have apple box or crate here and crate here accordingly. So should be a nice setup and that's what we're working with over here so we're going to move on to putting the rest of the horizontal supports and shelves in from the back side 
Now, <clears throat> the big thing about building this way and not knowing how things are gonna go and just kind of testing and dry fitting is you build it, you take it apart, you build it, you take it apart, you build it, take it apart. So now I gotta disconnect these points and these points up here. So I went ahead and made marks exactly where they're gonna be. You can see a, a little bit of uh, Sharpie there marked off. And we're gonna pull it out and then put these horizontal supports on the back side. And then when it's all built out and I like the way it looks, I'm gonna take it apart again to put in the wood because it's gonna slot into these grooves. So we'll just remove the front part and reattach it. It takes time to get this to all square up because you have so many mounting points. So you mount here, here, there's two there, two there, two there, two there. And if you do something wrong here, it's going to throw it off here. It has kind of a, you know, equal, equal and opposite reaction uh, to whatever you do. So it takes a bit of finessing to square this stuff up. If I welded all this up and got it fine-tuned and perfect, it's not going to be kicking stuff around so much. But that's a lot costlier. I don't know how to weld well enough yet to do it. So I went this route. And I hope this inspires people to, you know, get out there and try to do some things themselves and save quite a bit of money. Uh, at the end of the video, you'll probably see how much I paid all in for this, excluding tools that I had. And you'll see that it's a big cost savings. At this point in the build, the heat was getting to me. It was over 100 degrees Fahrenheit over multiple days of the build. I was trying to stay as hydrated as possible and take as many breaks as possible, but it just flat wears you out. The build out was also crammed in between gigs. I was working one day, building the next day, then working another day, and then building, working multiple days, and then building. So it didn't happen all in one day. So that was challenging in itself, but in the end, it got done. One of the things I wish I could have done sooner is take care of the insulation. I still haven't done the insulation because the van has been put to use, but now it's finally cooled off. It's winter time. And I think I'm going to be able to also insulate the van to make it better for the summer temperatures. The winter is not so bad here, but the summers get really hot and that insulation will help protect a lot of the equipment inside, including the racks and camera gear during transport. We just finished installing all the super strut and there's just a couple little things that I need to fine tune, but aside from that, it's ready to go. So we'll start on this end. I'm gonna give you kind of a full walkthrough and explain why I chose to do certain things when I built this out and some of the challenges that I came across. One of the big advantages of going this route is everything was purchased at Home Depot that I used to build all this out. It took me going to a few stores to get stuff in stock, but if something comes loose, something goes wrong, I could run up to the hardware store to get it and get it fixed up with no no issue at all. A lot of this stuff, actually probably majority of this stuff too is uh, carried by Lowe's and almost all electrical supply houses. So I'm gonna show you what we have going on here, but one of the main things I wanna show is the strength of this system. It is very sturdy. If you see me moving this around, there's no rattling or shaking. This is moving with everything. Also, if I put my weight on it, which is a lot of weight, there's no flexing, it's holding up really strong. So when I load it down with whatever I need to, I know it's gonna hold up really strong. So one of the last additions I did, and what's really cool about building stuff out, you have a game plan, but you can always change stuff. And this system is so modular, the way that it's built. If you look down here, you'll see 90s. And these 90s have the ability to be moved around. So if I knock this loose and this loose, this whole thing can come up and down. And you know it works in other ways too. There's bolts here, I could slide this over, but that's how I have this design. So if I knock loose the 90s that are on the backside here, I can go up and down. And same with this one, I can go up and down. And that gives me flexibility on adjusting for certain things. The core and the backbone of this whole build are these horizontal struts that were attached to the van. They go the full length, 10 foot, all the way back. And they support this whole shelving system in those points. And the shelving has verticals here that go from the bottom, they come up and they tuck right under that horizontal support that's actually uh, rib nutted into the side of the van. 
So it's really strong, really supported. Right here, we have the curve of the van. So we had to shift this in. So we used more scrap pieces here. We had the length added because we wanted it to be sturdy. If we just mounted it here from this point to this point, it would wobble, wouldn't have strength. We bring it down here, bolt it through here, here and here, and it gives us strength. And at that point right there is where it meets the van in the horizontal position. And then down below, we have another point that hits the van at the other horizontal. So those anchor points are a total of six anchor points, one, three at the bottom, three at the top that hold this whole build together. Now, when I originally designed this, I wanted to have four uh, apple box or four crates here on this side and three on this side. I was running into issues with my wheel wells over here. So I ended up making it where it's four crates here and three crates here. So that's why we have the spacing that we do. Also over here, I have Nova's that I carry that are very similar to common Pelican cases. And I wanted to make sure that I could slide those in here without issue. I didn't want to have to lift and throw something over. So these slide in so I could fit two Nova's and a 1200D under here. And it has plenty of clearance to get in and out of there. And then these are spaced accordingly to get Apple boxes in. Because I wasn't able to use real thin steel and get everything super precise and precision, I probably could have squeezed another row of Apple boxes in up top. But I do need to, sorry guys, it's really hot and sweating. Um, I do need to have room for my rags, my overhead rags, as well as any uh, diffusion that I may have like aperture domes or things like that. So they'll slide in on this level, which is a shorter level. Now, when building this out, I had something in mind. I didn't know what I was going to do, but I had a choice of how I wanted to mount the wood on this. So I'm gonna go with three quarter uh, Baltic birch or something that's cabinet grade that's a three quarter thickness. The quality is really nice, it holds up well, and it's really strong. So with all these laminated layers, when you put it in here, it's gonna have a lot of strength and it's not gonna flex. This is a about a two foot gap here overall, but you're not gonna get much sag happening with this. So I had a choice of putting it up top. And if I put it up top, that's gonna eat up some of my height. So not only am I gonna eat up height with this, but with this, and then I've gotta create some kind of lip to prevent those crates from coming out. So what I ended up deciding on is I'm gonna slide this inside it's gonna create a lip here. This is already rounded off and beveled, so it's gonna help keep it smooth. So when you insert or remove the crates, it's gonna have a nice action. And then the wood's just gonna stay slipped into these positions and it's not gonna come out. What's really cool is I'm gonna be able to just knock loose three of the uh, main bolts on the front of this, pull it back, put the wood in, put it back in place and it's gonna stay. And then I'm gonna do something to uh, firm it up so it doesn't constantly wobble and make noise. So that was my uh, thinking in that scenario. And up here is gonna be a little bit more narrow than down here. And it's the curve of the van is going to do that. So that's fine as well. Up top here will be another shelf. So you can imagine that shelf there, I'll have to put it in this way to get a better idea but it's going to slide in be flush and that's going to allow me to put uh, this will obviously slide into that space let's see if we could get it to go and i doubt we can no too big so what it's going to do is it's going to provide uh, a shelf for speed rail overhead tubes so square tube and things like that can just kind of be tucked in over here out of the way we have our rags over here we have our racks continued or um, diffusion uh, domes things like that and then we'll have apple bar or uh, crates here crates here crates here and crates down below so what i'm going to do is i'm going to give you an example of what it's going to kind of look like so this is a four foot section that's left over from one of my cart builds Obviously when it, it's installed correctly, it's gonna be perfectly flush and flat. 
versus tilted because it's going to slide in over there. But I want to show you what effect we're still going to get with the crates and how this looks overall. So we'll be able to catch that lip. So even if they fall down low, we'll still catch there. But the way crates are designed is they do have a lip for when they stack onto each other. So that's really nice. So if it does work out to it catching like that, it's fine. Or it could hit the lower part, which we will have plenty of room for either way to happen. I left wiggle room. When I was building this out, since I wasn't dealing with precision and exact welds and cuts uh, with this whole design, I gave a little bit of wiggle room, you know, if there needs to be a little bit of movement. Also for height, I didn't want it to be perfectly lined up because sometimes stuff sticks out of apple box or uh, crates and people make the mistake of not packing them back correctly. So I wanna leave a little bit of wiggle room there if it's needed. So you have that flexibility. But also now we have four crates here. Then we have four crates below giving us eight. Then we have another four crates below that giving us 12. And then below that we can do um, short uh, crates, regular standard ones, or a couple long ones and short ones. But if we just did standard ones, we could put another four down below. On this side, we will have the ability to put three. So we have 12 uh, of the big crates there, and then we're adding another uh, three here, three here, giving us 18 total. So we have 18 full-size crates, and then we have three uh, or four of the smaller regular style ones, and then rags fill up up here, and then overheads. What's really cool here is on the end, I have the ability to put some extra stands in. So I'll be able to add stands and make those, uh, you know, fine tune adjustments as needed. It's like, oh, if I need to uh, move this around to make them fit better, once I get everything dialed in, I'll be able to move stuff around. I love how things are coming together on the project. What do you think so far? On the next episode, we're gonna introduce some of the lumber and put in the shelving and also work on the other side of the van. See you on the next one.